on the night of october twenty ninth twenty twelve superstorm sandy struck the u s northeast with a record path nearly a thousand miles wide and record storm surges affecting millions of people and impacting the entire shorelines of new jersey and new york state this video shows impacts of fire island a barrier island centered in a chain of islands off of long island they make up nearly all of new york's beach interface with the rising Atlantic Ocean. The impact that got the most attention occurred at the remote wilderness spot of Old Inlet. This breach allows water to flow again between the Atlantic and the Great South Bay. The concern of many is more flooding around the entire bay, but in the one year after Sandy, that has not happened, even during significant storms. This breach was one of two in miles of wilderness, but similar forces caused extensive erosion of the 32-mile-long beach managed by the National Park Service as part of the Fire Island National Seashore. Since this video is about impacts to island communities, our attention turns now miles away from Old Inlet to the sections of Fire Island where all of its populations reside. Hi, this is Michael Victor. As one knowledgeable of island landscape through project work as an arborist and landscape architect, I'm about to share representative impacts on plants in island communities. Impacts shown are concentrated in the population centers of Ocean Beach and Fire Island Pines, as well as in the communities that lie between them and in the Sunken Forest Nature Preserve. While Fire Island communities are unique with their access by ferry and boardwalks, my intent with this video, beyond addressing issues local to Fire Island, is to convey helpful information on storm impacts for residents in East Coast Barrier Islands and coastal communities in general. The scope of the video involves the following specific impacts documented the summer after Sandy. Beach and dune erosion. And on landscape plants, burial by washover sand, flooding, and salt spray. The video concludes with recommendations for planting non-native and native trees within the geography of Sandy. The following summary of island natural environments will convey the protective nature of coastal dunes and plants and allow viewers to readily understand varying degrees of impacts between communities. First, primary dunes stabilized with dune grasses are critical to protecting all built structures and island vegetation. They are the first line of defense against strong waves, wind, and salt spray. On the front of these dunes, American beach grass dominates. On the back side, grasses knit tightly with American beach plum, dwarf cherry trees, and sparse evergreen trees, all stunted in height by salt spray. Second, the presence and heights of secondary dunes determine the amount of native tree cover and in turn, level of protection for inner bayside land. Dune woodlands shelter maritime forests, but these landscape environments exist only where the island is wide enough to accommodate them at the sunken forest width is 1,300 feet or one quarter of a mile. On the ocean side of these dunes, Native evergreen trees combined with native cherry trees all reduce in height again by drifting ocean salt. On dune ridges and bayside slopes, Pinus rigida or pitch pine dominates. Within the landscape of Sandy, the species also dominates native canopies in New Jersey barrier islands and pine barrens and the pine barrens in eastern Long Island associated with the Hamptons. 
Plant diversity increases substantially as one goes further inland. Predominant in the maritime forest, American holly, sassafras, and serviceberry. And where frequent freshwater wetlands appear, black tupelo and red maple trees flourish. These forests support a rich understory, which include cultivated woodland residential gardens. At the Great South Bay shoreline, in natural areas, salt marshes buffer adjacent land and habitats. In communities, however, most bayfront properties are dry with bulkheads at the bay. Bayfront flooding from storms is a constant threat though, and bay salt spray does impact plants, but much less so than near the ocean. I emphasize that cross sections like this vary tremendously along the island because as island width varies constantly, so do the presence and heights of secondary dunes. In addition, structures such as houses, pools, and boardwalks create complex structure and grading conditions in these diverse native landscape settings. In contrast, conditions were the simplest at Old Inlet, where island width was only 300 feet and vegetation was sparse. The landscape was thus vulnerable to a breach by Sandy, which she brought into being, nonetheless, with widespread, tremendous forces. Looking at preserve area beaches reveals patterns of erosion and level of its severity. Here at Sunken Forest Preserve, flattening of the upper beach and escarpment of dunes made the beach wider, the case the length of the island. Easy to identify at this point of the beach are complete erosion of the primary dune and subsequent overwash fans through them that left large amounts of sand deposits. Both types of erosion occurred extensively at community beaches. In all, 54% of the volume of upper beach and primary dune sand was eroded. At beachfront properties, there was a startling difference in impacts between where there were substantial dunes and where they were less so. In Cherry Grove, for instance, notice in this image from 2009 the significant extent of the dunes and planted buffers in front of the buildings. In this next image, taken a few days after Sandy, while there was some erosion of the dunes, the building structures were mostly left intact. Tragically, the impact scenario is much different in other communities. To illustrate, we look first at 2009 images of Ocean Bay Park and the adjacent community of Point of Woods. In both, notice the line of built, nourished dunes and level of dune grass establishment. This composite image of conditions after Sandy reveals the complete erosion of the dunes and the extensive structural damage that such erosion had caused. While some houses were undermined completely, others had entire structures ripped apart, others buried in overwashed sand. Erosion was also extensive in Fire Island Pines. Again, notice the level of dune established in 2009 in these images of the central part of the community beach. This image after Sandy shows similar dune illumination, uprooted trees, severe undermining of structures, collapsed decks, and additionally, amenities like swimming pools uplifted and ruined. Erosion was the most destructive impact to boardwalks and private houses. On the hopeful side, communities have rebuilt public boardwalks and property owners have, or are in the process of, rebuilding. More substantial reconstruction of primary dunes with U.S. Army Corps of Engineer oversight and federal funding will be comprehensive in the entire Fire Island seashore and begin in January of 2014.